This week on Women Who Hustle, Chidinma Maduka is a well-respected HR and talent manager who prides herself in creating spaces for men and women to thrive in their chosen careers. So I loved it and I decided to go for it and go. I studied it, I did a certification, I became a professional and really I haven't regretted that decision ever, ever since then. Her love for people pushed her out of a well-paying job into the world of human resources. When I told my boss at my then investment bank that I wanted to study human resources, and he laughed, he laughed straight in my face. She was mocked, discouraged, and belittled for choosing HR as a career, but that only made her more resilient as she continued to push past boundaries made to silence her. Be true to who you are. Like, know what it is that is your passion. Well, my name is Chidima, Chidima, and I am a HR professional. Um, I currently head HR and corporate services at a natural gas distribution company in, in Lagos, Nigeria. I do full spectrum HR, so that is from end to end recruitment, all up into um, resignation and termination. And my corporate services portfolio oversees procurement, logistics, information technology, and administration. Um, and I also um, consult on the side. Actually, it's more like a mentoring and coaching platform that I have for young people who are trying to uh, move up in their careers, in their organizations, or maybe people who have been out of work for a while and then are trying to get back into work. And then really try to help people be the best versions of themselves, really, and deal with any of the challenges that um, working because um, I'm really tailored to working professionals or entrepreneurs of um, the challenges that they face. So I'm a licensed life coach and um, I use that skill as well as my HR um, experience to help people to, to have business solutions and to be better versions of themselves really. Great, thank you for asking that because um, I think it's also very important when you're working in your career to actually know that this is what you really want to be doing. So initially, when in my life, when I finished school, I studied sociology, I have a BS in sociology. And then I got a job in an investment bank by a series of coincidences, really. I wasn't going out to work in investment banking. I just found myself working there. And when I was working there, I was working as an investment portf portfolio manager. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, I was good with numbers. I was able to, I liked the business side of it. I liked the fact that I was helping my clients to invest in the stock market. But I realized more and more that I really liked the interaction, the personal side of it. So I began to do some investigations into careers where I can be people facing. I didn't want to just be at the back office. But portfolios, really, at the end of the day, you're looking at spreadsheets and stock market information and all of that. So I, I realized that I like the people side of it. So I started researching. So somebody who studies sociology, what can they do that is um, that you can work with people? So there were careers in marketing, sales, you know, customer relations and things like that. But then I happened to stumble on human resources and I, I, read, it, I read up on it and I realized that, wow, this is something I can do. I studied sociology, which is the study of people in society and how they interact. And I'm now in an organization and there's a, a profession that helps people in organizations to actually add value to the company as a whole. So that kind of, that kickstarted my, my interest and my love in human resources. Like, yeah, I can do this. But unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of support from my investment banking community, not in my organization and not anywhere else. Everybody just thought, why do you want to do human resources? In fact, I wrote a post on LinkedIn actually about it when I told my boss at my then investment bank that I wanted to study human resources. And he laughed. He laughed straight in my face. And he even asked me that, you know, but you're, you're smart. You're not daft. Like, you're not a daft person. So, you know, it's only people that are not very bright that work in human resources. And I was like, wow. But I was so determined because I knew that this was something that I had a flair for. It's something I would enjoy. And I really felt that if you're going to be working eight, nine, ten hours a day, because investment banking then we're working 10 hours a day, that this was something that has that I loved. 
So I loved it and I decided to go for it and go. I studied it. I did a certification. I became a professional. And really, I haven't regretted that decision ever, then, ever since then. Coming up. I really believe there are no bad employees. They are just bad structures and managers who really don't really know how to lead effectively. So that happened after many years, actually, of being in HR. You know, when I started in HR uh, almost 20 years ago now, there wasn't a lot of studying done. People just kind of fell into HR. So you did it, you were in administration, and then you went into HR. So I took my time in my certification. I didn't just convert because there was an option to just get your certification. But I actually went through the exam route. I read, I studied. I really wanted to acquire the knowledge, you know, in understanding human resources. And after I did that, the more I worked, I realized that people are not are not performing or they're not they're not behaving in the way that you expect. Not because they are not smart or not because they can't contribute. I really believe there are no bad employees. They are just bad structures and managers who really don't really know how to lead effectively. So while trying to help the managers and help the people to work effectively, I realized that there's a bigger, there's a bigger why everybody has and that HR really should try and ensure that you get out because if you can establish the why of why somebody is coming to work and you can align that why with the organizational reason for being in business, when the two align, you can have a very happy, engaged employee and a company that is receiving value from that employee. So whilst going into the journey of making sure that people were working well in offices and businesses were making money, the bridge really was working with people to be the best versions of themselves, to be able to add value and to be happy and fulfilled in their own lives. And then I started researching again about and I did my certification in how to, in being a life coach because I felt that if you have that certification that you know effectively how to help people on their own journey. And that's why I really like life coaching. It's not about telling people what to do. It's about working with people for them to actualize their own dreams and their own desires and their own goals. But what my love is actually for successful businesses. And I really believe that businesses can be profitable while still ensuring that the people that are working for them are also happy, fulfilled and engaged. Professionally was um, when I came into the company I have now currently, um, they have a board meeting every quarter, okay? And in the board meeting, they pre pre we prepare board papers. Um, and then on the day of the meeting, uh, the divisional heads come and present to the board. So before I came, it was only the um, revenue-facing departments that prepared board papers. So that was commercial, um, technical team, and then the finance team. Of course, being the finance, how are we spending the money? How do we generate the money? You know? And of course, there was no HR. HR was absent. So when I started working there, I, I observed these um, board meetings that will come up. And of course, because I always also oversee corporate services, which is administration as well, I will be tasked with the planning of the board meeting. So what the director and I said, why doesn't HR present at this board meeting? And um, she was like, well, they didn't see um, the value that they had a former HR and um, 
what she presented was extremely administrative and they didn't see the value in it at this board meeting. It's very strategic. So I said, I would like to prepare what I think was a very good report. report. I really put everything I had in there. I, I researched, I did my analytics, I had my data, I had everything in there and I did it. Done what it was that I, I've just been talking about now, which is understanding the business, understanding the language of the business, understanding the sector and providing value um, to the owners of the business so that the board of directors to see how the human capital strategy was aligning with the organizational strategy. So I, I felt I felt really good because I, even before that, I've been preaching about HR adding value, HR being the drivers of organization, HR being the most important aspect of any organization. In fact, as a rule, that's how I start my presentation to the board. I'm like, okay, this is the HR department report, you know, the most important department because we are the person where, where, where they organize where the task, but that we're tasked with 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 taking care of the most valuable assets of the organization. So professionally being able to do that um, in an oil and gas company was extremely significant. Now personally one of my big weights I feel that I've had in studying human resources is ensuring that I mentor people, especially young professionals in human resources, to see the potential that HR has and mentoring them and seeing them reach their full potential in human resources, seeing them, you know, add value to the organization. I find so an such a rewarding feeling really, because honestly, there's nothing worse for me than seeing some HR professional that is just there because it was the easiest thing for them to get into in an organization. I, I really find that very, very, very sad. Coming up. Be true to who you are. Like, know what it is that is your passion. Know your why. Know it. I sometimes have conversations with HR um, professionals and I really wonder if they don't understand the impact of their roles. You know, some of them are, are just happy doing personnel work, which is administrative letters, you know, payroll and things like that. Well, HR is extremely strategic. It is so, it is an essential component to any organization's success. So, you know, even just a practical example, you, you have industry conferences, you know, that is pertaining to a sector. You don't see HR professionals there. They're, they're not present at those conferences and you're wondering why. How are you going to be able to prefer HR solutions if you don't understand the business? You don't understand the economy of the business. You don't understand what the competitive landscape is. You don't understand how the business is projecting into the future, like you, you're not going to provide HR solutions. You're just going to be reactive. So something is happening. They say, oh, we need to recruit somebody. Are you going to recruit the person? When you're supposed to be able to anticipate into the future, this is the manpower you're going to need based on the direction the company is going to. You know, so I tell all HR people that I come across, I said, the first thing you must do is understand your business. Ask for the company's financial statements and read them understand them you must know the business if you don't understand the business every time you speak in a meeting or you try to contribute you're going to be speaking in a vacuum and nobody likes people that speak in a vacuum and that's why you find people that when you're in a, in a meeting strategic important meetings the hr personnel is not there because they don't see the value that you can bring to the table so it's very important that hr people understand the value that they bring and be able to be that person for their employees who are counting on them and of course for the business as well because the people will bring the value to the business so that the business can be successful. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to say what might be controversial, and I want to be clear before I even say it. I am not saying that it's good that we had a pandemic I and mean, people died and it's actually quite harrowing. But I do appreciate what COVID provided for the world and for people. So traditional work was just not effective that in the sense that, you know, people were burnt out, people were dealing with a lot of stress, people's families were affected, um, people were dealing with all lots of things whilst working. You know, it was a lot of stress that the body had to undergo working long hours and then until you have to go on vacation before you can get some rest and then before you know it the vacation is over vacation is never really enough to 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 provide the relief that um each each each, each, each and everybody needs so covid brought this um pandemic and people were forced to look into flexible working i mean there's always been flexible working but many organizations many countries do not even adapt to flexible working as an option so now that we have this um, global revolution, as I call it, a new world order on how people work and how work is defined, it's giving a lot of flexibility and autonomy to employees on how they can work. And companies had no choice but to do it. So I believe that we're never going to go back to how we used to be. So what I see for the future is going to have flexible work as a, as a realistic option for everybody, not just a few and not just some people in specialized countries. Everybody, even us, we in developing countries now know that this is the way that we're going to work. Okay, so it allows people now to choose the quality of the work that they want to do. Of course, there's also considerations around mental issues. People who work alone, they who live alone, who don't have any family, who don't have a lot of interactions and things like that. So I think the future, the most um, exciting part of it is if you can have a hybrid option, that is um, opportunity to come into the office and then still work from home. And if you can get, if the organization can have a balance between the two, having feasible options where you can do both. And I think that we can, we can actually harness the potential that these flexible working options have really provided for everyone. Next time on Hashtag Women Who Hustle. I have a disability, it is what it is. Cause for me, and it's a moment of learning, don't feel bad about it. For me, when you say differently, able, then you you are separating us from it's like we do things differently we don't i breathe the same way i eat the same way i don't have special needs because i've got the same needs as you i just happen to have a disability Be true to who you are. Like, know what it is that is your passion. Know your why. Know it. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't have to look like what my life is like or what your life is like. But know what it is that motivates you and then pursue it with everything that you have. This is only when your passion aligns with your vocation that you can be at your happiest self. So I'm passionate about people and I found my career in HR and that is why I'm always passionately speaking and excitedly doing my work. But if you're doing a job, which I'm calling your vocation, and it has nothing to do with who you really are or what your interest is or what your passion, you're going to find yourself burnt out and unfulfilled. Mm -hmm.